Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the line of Pollock Type 1 circuit breakers. A circuit breaker is a really small but important component like the one that we have here today. And what that circuit breaker is going to do is protect uh, whatever you're powering up, whether it be a fan, a winch, a pump, a uh, motor. In our case today, we have this uh, for a trolling motor on a fishing boat. Um, it's going to protect those accessories. That way, if a short or something like that were to happen, you're not going to destroy that accessory. So the way the circuit breaker is going to work is almost like a fuse uh, to kind of keep things simple. There's actually a contact inside of the breaker that allows power to one from one side of the breaker to the other. Well, whenever electricity is running through that contact, that's going to generate heat. And depending on what size breaker you have, whenever it detects too much of that heat, it's going to lift that contact up or break the connection, if you will. That way power can no longer go from your battery or your power source to the auxiliary product that you're powering up. So you're no longer gonna have that connection and that's going to protect that said accessory. Now these are auto resetting. So what that means is once that contact cools down enough, it's going to make the connection again and power will once again flow through. These breakers are designed to work with 12 volt systems. However, if your accessory runs on a different voltage, let's just say 24 volt, uh, to give you an example, you will need to get a different type of breaker. And I would just suggest one like this. This is a type three breaker. You can see they're a little bit different, but the concept is the same. They're gonna work the same and keep everything protected. And because this is a type three, it's going to allow you to use uh, up to 42 volts. So something I thought that was worth mentioning. And if that's your case, you can find these breakers right here at eTrailer. So there's a few different reasons why you would need a circuit breaker. One of them being, let's say you're hooking up a new accessory and you wanna make sure to keep it protected. So that's pretty straightforward there. Another reason would be sooner or later, even though these breakers are auto resetting, if they do trip a lot, sooner or later they will wear out and just not work anymore. So uh, you could always just use it as a replacement. Or like in our case today, this is a uh, new boat and this was the existing breaker on that trolling motor. And when you tried to remove the wires, the studs were just completely rusted. The stud actually broke off in there. You can't get the nut off of it. And personally, um, when it comes to stuff like this, uh, I just want to make sure that the electrical system is right and I don't want any trouble be stranded out in the water or anything like that. So that's why we replaced this one. It's just worn out. And by doing that, it gives you a little more peace of mind knowing that you have a brand new breaker and you have something that's reliable. Now, just something I wanted to point out. In our case, our breaker is mounted in this compartment here where it's gonna remain dry and out of the elements. But if yours is mounted outside, that's just fine. The weather isn't going to damage it. Obviously, after uh, years of use and everything else, uh, it will start to show some wear. So one thing you can do, uh, you can pick up separately a rubber cover that kind of goes over this breaker and over the contacts. So it's gonna help keep everything uh, off of it. And not to mention too, uh, it might eliminate you if it's somewhere in a high traffic area or something, for example, and you're worried about bumping into the two breakers while you have power to it, or the two studs rather, it'll eliminate you from uh, tripping the breaker that way as well. So just something I thought was worth mentioning. So now that we seen our breaker mounted up and kind of learned about how it works and what it does, Let's go ahead and set a few different ones on our bench and take a closer look at them. So when it comes to the line of Pollock circuit breakers, you're gonna have many different options. So here I just laid out a few of the common ones. We have a 20 amp, a 30 amp, and a 50 amp. And as you can see, they're nearly identical in size, shape, 
uh, everything else. The only difference is going to be internally. So just to kind of give you a comparison there. Now, there's a lot of different combinations uh, that you could use. Here we have our mounting bracket that runs this way, but these are also available with mounting brackets that run the opposite way. So you can have a couple of different mounting choices, whichever uh, best suits your needs. And there's also these breakers without any brackets at all. So if you have maybe some type of uh, housing or something that your breakers were originally in, there's a option available for you as well. Something I do like about these breakers is that the studs are going to be different colors and they're also going to have a label, auxiliary and battery. So it really does take the guesswork out of it whenever you're uh, hooking this up. You know that the copper colored post labeled battery is gonna go to your source of power and the silver color one labeled auxiliary is going to go to what you have it hooked up, whether it be a pump, a motor, a winch, whatever the case may be. So it really just makes things a little bit easier. So sometimes these things have to be mounted in relatively tight spots. So I figure there's a couple of measurements that uh, some of you may find useful. If we go from the center of the hole to the center of the hole here in the mounting bracket, that's going to measure out one and nine sixteenths of an inch. And that measurement's gonna be the same regardless if you have the uh, mounting bracket like this or the straight mount one. As far as the height, so from the bottom of the breaker to the top of the stud, that's going to be one and three eighths of an inch. So relatively compact, and uh, as long as you have a little bit of space, you should be able to get these mounted up properly. So when it comes to actually figuring out what size breaker you need as far as the amperage rating goes, uh, there's a few different things that you can do. A lot of times, whatever product you're trying to power up will actually have a label on it uh, telling you what size breaker that they recommend or how many amps it draws. Uh, if that information is not on there, you can always reach out to the manufacturer and nine times out of 10, they're gonna have a suggestion uh, that they would give you. Or if all else fails, you can always use an amp meter and measure the amount of amps that product is drawing and that can help you figure out what size breaker you, you need. If you ended up testing it, uh, kind of a good rule of thumb is just to get a breaker rated a little bit higher than what it actually pulls, not by much. Uh, and I say that because a lot of times these products, when you first turn them on, they can draw a little bit more amps right off the bat. Um, and so you want to give that a little bit of room. You don't want to trip your breaker all the time for no reason, really. So uh, as far as choosing what size breaker you need, that's just a little bit of information you can use to help figure that out. I will say the breaker does feel pretty good, uh, like it's well made. It is metal here on the housing and there's some plastic up top, but even if you try to squeeze it really hard and try to bend it or flex it, it's not moving at all. So it's nice and solid. I feel like if you bumped into it or anything like that, you shouldn't really have to worry a whole lot. And I do like the fact too that they give you nuts that are actually you know, these star washers almost. It's like a lock nut. So that way, whenever you hook up your wiring to it and snug it down, you shouldn't have to worry too much about that backing off over time or becoming loose. But other than that, regardless of your application, these are all gonna get installed pretty much the exact same way and doesn't really take a whole lot of time, not a whole lot to them. So really shouldn't give you a whole lot of issues. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and hook it up together now. So to get your breaker installed, the first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you have your battery or power source disconnected. So in our case, we have a battery disconnect switch here. So I'm just going to turn that into the off position. Now we won't have any power. And what I'm going to be powering up or using the circuit breaker for rather is a trolling motor on a fishing boat. Now, like I said, these have tons of different applications uh, and this is just one of them. So here's my wires. And what I'm gonna do is take the breaker and I'm going to mount it to this wall right here. Now, whenever you mount this up, keep in mind that the copper colored post label battery 
goes to the power supply and the silver auxiliary post goes to uh, whatever you're running. So uh, mount it to where it makes sense. In our case, this is my battery wire, the one that is getting power. So I'm gonna mount this with the battery post facing up and I'm going to use some self-tapping screws to do that. And you can find these here at E-Trailer if you need some. And get it lined up. What I like to do is get one going about halfway. That kind of allows you to swing it where you want it to go. I grab my other self tapper. I got a whole lot of room to work with here. Get that in. Then we can just run them both down completely. So now that we have the breaker secured, we can go ahead and remove these nuts. Now when you're taking these off, be careful. A lot of times they kind of just pop right off at the end and they're pretty easy to lose. So just be mindful of that. So once we have them off, we can take our corresponding wires. So again, this one here is coming from my power supply, so I'm going to put that ring terminal over the battery stud. And I do want to mention if you need any ring terminals or anything like that, um, you can pick those up right here at E-Trailer. We have quite a bit of wiring options and different types of ring terminals, so if you're running low on any of that stuff, you can always grab it here. And then I'm going to take my other ring terminal. This goes up to the trolling motor itself. So I'll put that over the auxiliary post. Let's go ahead and get these started hand tight. And we can come back with a 3 8 socket and just tighten, tighten the nuts down. Whenever you're tightening these, you don't have to really crank on them by any means. You just want to get them uh, snug. Then I'll usually go kind of more, maybe another eighth of a turn, something like that. So once you get both of them tight. So once you have everything tight and you're done working on all your electrical components, we can go ahead, turn our power supply back on. And it's not a bad idea just to test our component to make sure that everything's working properly. To test it, you're just gonna turn it on and make sure that it works properly. And you can see we have power to the motor, our propeller spinning, and I think we're good to go. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the line of Pollock Type 1 circuit breakers.